Hello, my name is Felicity Shenton. I'm the Public Involvement and Community Engagement Manager for the ARC, the Applied Research Collaboration, which is funded by the NIHR, National Institute for Health and Social Care Research. My job is to make sure that the voice of the public, service users, patients, families, carers and local communities is an active part of all the research that's carried out by the ARC. This session is for community organisations, members of the public and for researchers. Involving public partners and communities in applied research that aims to address health inequalities is a social justice issue. Health inequalities are created by structural inequalities, discrimination and prejudice. This includes racism, sexism, homophobia, and treating people differently because of their disability, their economic status, or where they live. It's really important, therefore, that those people who are most affected by health inequalities, by poverty, austerity, and more recently by COVID, are active partners in the research that aims to tackle some of these issues. Without the active voices of local communities and of service users in research, we will not fully understand the issues and the end users of the research need to be at the heart of it from the outset. If you're starting a piece of research as a researcher, a PhD student or as a community researcher, there's lots of help and support available and there are many opportunities to work alongside organisations that can help you to access service users, community groups and can help you to decide how best to create opportunities for them to be involved with you in research. This is not just as participants, but as public partners or public contributors in the research team. The ARC has a public advisory network and a young public advisory network that meet regularly and can be a useful source of advice about your research. One of the best ways to engage with communities and with service users is through the voluntary and community sectors and organisations such as VON, the Voluntary Organisation Network North East, Cumbria CBS, Cumbria Council for Voluntary Services, or local community foundations. There are numerous voluntary and community sector groups and projects which, which can also help you to advertise opportunities or to make contact with the people you're hoping to work with through their own contacts and networks. These might be communities in a particular area, such as coastal towns, rural areas, urban areas, or in specific parts of the region, such as West Cumbria or Teesside. Some organisations work with specific groups, such as people living with cancer, people with mental health issues, children and young people's organisations, ethnically minoritised groups, or groups run by learning disabled people. Across the North East and North Cumbria, there are thousands of organisations and charities. So, Think about who your tar target audience is and therefore who needs to be actively involved in your research. Who are the key stakeholders? And really importantly, make sure that you start the conversation right from the start of the research process and not once all the important decisions have already been made. Make sure this is not a tokenistic exercise and that there's a genuine opportunity for people to make a difference. Every local authority has access to service user groups or works with groups with older people, children with additional needs or communities in areas of high deprivation. And every local authority has a health watch programme working in the area to support the voice of patients and the public on health and social care services. Most NHS hospital trusts or uh, the mental health trusts, the MTW and TUV, uh, regional mental health trusts have service user involvement networks and involvement specialists employed to support these groups. Many GP practices or primary care networks also have patient participation groups, and all of the NIHR research partnerships, of which there are many, also have patient and public involvement leads like myself. There is a North East and North Cumbria Creating Connections Network that meets bi-monthly and involves all of the public involvement and community engagement leads across the region. So asking for advice and information from this network is also an option.
you'll need to consider barriers to involvement. How to maximise opportunities for people to involve by addressing any financial or practical barriers. Things you need to consider include access issues, where meetings will take place if they're face to face. Probably they need to be in buildings that are familiar to and accessible to people. You need to consider wheelchair access, accessible toilets, hearing aids and so on. If they're online, you will need to consider whether people will have digital access. Not everyone has a smartphone or tablet, or may have restricted data allowances or no access to Wi-Fi. Some people don't have the confidence or skills to use these platforms. Whilst for others who may have a caring responsibility or difficulties in using public transport, online meetings are better. Always check people's preferences and don't make assumptions. Remuneration. The NIHR has national guidelines on remuneration for public involvement in health and social care research. There is an expectation, therefore, that people will receive financial recognition for their time and their expertise, as well as reimbursement for any expenses, travel, childcare costs, personal assistance, etc. Please always check any implications for each individual's tax or benefits payments as both the HMRC and DWP have their own guidance. And please also check your institution's payment policies and processes. These are often slow and complex. Public partners need to know in advance how they will be rewarded for their involvement. This is one of the most contentious areas of public and social user involvement in research and can create the biggest barriers to involvement. Please consider whether there are any training or support needs for public involvement or for a community group. There is lots of free online training available to help people to develop an understanding of the research process and about what it means to be a community or public partner in research. And also think about how you will maintain and support the people that you're going to involve. One meeting every six months won't ensure the partners feel they're part of a team. So you might want to have a few meetings at the start of the work and then some ongoing email updates between meetings just to keep everyone informed about progress. You'll need to think about language. This includes people for whom English is not their first language, people who use British Sign Language, and also for people with limited literacy issues or for children and young people age-appropriate language. You might need interpreters for verbal language or translators for written language. You need to think about who to approach, how to access people with the right levels of qualification and the skills, and you need to consider things like gender issues. I'd like to introduce you to EJ, who uses British Sign Language. EJ is going to talk to you now about issues you need to consider when creating opportunities for their involvement in research, and I'll give you some useful tips about involvement. Some important tips for researchers when engaging with members of the deaf community who use BSL. Firstly, make sure there are BSL interpreters available. This should be professional interpreters, not family members, and there should be a choice of interpreters so that people can work with someone of their choosing. For example, issues around gender, experience, etc. should be considered. Also, think about using a variety of methods for engaging people. This could include perhaps social media and also going to deaf people's spaces, for example, deaf clubs, etc., or organisations that work with deaf people. Furthermore, thinking about approaching schools where children whose parents are deaf may be able to signpost the information to their parents. Also, make sure that the research has an impact. Deaf people want to see improvements in their access to and experience of health and social care services. They need to know that their involvement in research is going to make a difference. Also, making sure when visiting healthcare settings that there is access and provision made available, digital systems for announcements when a patient's name is called, 
that their name is visibly displayed on screen, which room number and what doctor they're planning to see. Impact. Another really important issue to consider is making sure that you keep your partners informed and involved in the dissemination process so that they know what difference they have made. Along with issues about remuneration, this is the second most frequent complaint I hear from service users and community organisations. They hear from researchers at the start of the process and they get involved in helping to shape the project, comment on documents or information strategies. And then once the research is finished, they hear nothing more about sharing outcomes. They have no idea what difference they've made to the research, or indeed what the findings or impact of the research has been. Please make sure you keep everyone informed from start to finish. So that's it. Make sure you create opportunities that are meaningful to, accessible to, and inclusive of those people whom you most want the research to impact on. There are lots of useful tools and resources available on the ARC website if you're looking for anything specific around peer research, co-production, increasing the quality and diversity in your research and excellent resources for working in communities. There's a new code of practice which has been launched for working in the voluntary community and social enterprise sector and the ARC has regular drop-in sessions and online training available. This is a really important area of work. Academics, researchers, practitioners and clinicians clinicians must create opportunities for embedding the voice of the public in research that aims to address issues around structural and health inequalities. If you can't find what you're looking for, please ask.